Good afternoon and warm welcome to this Forsyot's Technology Future Vision Stretchable Electronics webinar session. In today, today's agenda, we will be focusing on technology future topics. In, in the previous uh, sessions, we have been focusing on logistics uh, chain and then also automotive interior revolution related topics. If you next page, Petri, please. In, in the previous sessions, uh, we have been doing recordings from the webinar sessions. So in case you have not been uh, having a chance to participate to those, those ones, we will be posting uh, these recordings into the Force of web pages. Also, this session uh, recording will be or can be found from Force of web page uh, then going further. And today we have a great honor to have here as a speaker, Matti Mantusalo, a guest speaker from uh, Tampere University, professor. And uh, then uh, in addition, we will be having uh, Petri Järvinen from, from uh, Forsiot CTO uh, speaking about Forsiot technology related uh, innovations. And this uh, straightforward webinar session is something that uh, serious is something that we will be also continuing in the future. When, always when there's a specific topic or launch that we will be providing uh, further information then or, or see that there's a possibility to discuss and connect uh, further online. So we will be posting in the future this as well. But today, uh, my name is Tutti Julkun and I will be from Forsio team uh, hosting this session and uh, then facilitating the discussion here. And uh, as mentioned, Petri Arvinen will be talking about uh, Forsio technology trends and Matti Mantusalo then uh, relating stretchable electronics from Tampere University perspective. In the end, after all of the presentations, we will have a Q&A session. So please post your questions via the webinar Q&A tool. We will be answering in the end uh, to, to many of those in case uh, something that we're not able to provide answer during this session, we can then come back to those later on offline. But warm welcome to the session and without further say, we can go into the first topic of the day. So Petri, please go ahead and your, you can start your presentation concerning sensor technology trends. Okay, thank you, Tutti, and good afternoon on my behalf. My name is Petri Arvin, and I'm the CTO of Forsyot, and I'm going to tell a few words about uh, technology trends and uh, the work that we are we are currently working on towards the future in, in, in the technology area. Now, Petri, at least for me, the screen is not fully visible. Is that the same thing, Tero? Can you see the presentation fully. Yeah, I have the same problem that uh, there is something missing from the left side, so. Yeah, so if you can make it better smaller for some reason, it's now a uh, mm. page or part of. This is also okay like this if, if um, now we can see. Thank you. Is this, is this fine? Yeah, this is fine. Thank you. Okay, okay. I'm gonna go this way. So, so uh, <coughs> it's visible now. So, just a recap uh, about the company. Forsyth uh, is a four and a half year old company specializing in connectors, connected sensor systems, uh, especially for automotive logistics and wearables. And uh, Forsyth utilizes printed structures on stretchable materials and uh, advanced algorithms for maximum accuracy. In the in the right hand side you can see a few few examples of the parameters that we are able to deliver out of from our our sensor system uh, touch even hovering i.e sensing from the distance uh, pressure weight force starting from very light finger pressure up to massive container weights and uh, there are of course also a lot of different uh, derivatives what can be got uh, or learned from the data or by utilizing additional sensors in the in the system and the sensor fusion. Uh, the overall 
sensor measurement system that we have uh, is, is seen here. It's a generic picture of the of the overall, and uh, it's uh, of course tailored uh, for all of the use cases. But this is a kind of a generic generic one. In the left, there is our sensor. Uh, that includes the sensor sheet itself and the embedded electronics and the embedded software. In the middle, there is a node to where the data is first sent from the sensor. Uh, in some use cases, this is the final endpoint also, uh, for example, in, in human machine interface uh, cases. But in some use cases, data can be sent forward to the cloud. Uh, that's seen in the, in the right hand side. Uh, for data storage and, and analytics. In this case, the middle unit is acting just as a gateway. We are also working on solutions where the data can be sent directly to the cloud. A uh, few drivers for the, for the technology development. Um, there are quite a lot of uh, different drivers that uh, we need to take into account in the, in, the, in the technology area. Some of those are common for all of, all of those business areas and uh, use cases, but some of are more important in, in certain areas. In the, in the upper left bubble, there are some of the drivers for user experience. A premium look and feel, comfort, ways to hide technical details, uh, easy to use from the end user point of view. Uh, so th those are kind of uh, grouping things that are related to the uh, optimizing and improving user experience. Another area, uh, the bottom left bubble is related to the measurement data itself. It's more more like a technical thing, the quality of the data and also the availability of the data uh, so that the data can be available in real time and it can be available all, all the time. Uh, we also want our solutions to be environmentally sustainable, which sets, of course, certain requirements to the technology and, and development, and that's in the, in the right uh, top corner. And finally, uh, regardless of what kind of new technologies we take into use, we must still be able to provide our solutions that have the basic things right, reliability, safety, cost efficiency, capability for mass production, easiness for our customers to integrate the technology in their products. And that's in the, in the bottom right. So all of these we need to take into account in the in the in the development, not just uh, focusing on on certain uh, single things. Uh, just to recap the, the technologies that we have, uh, and uh, I will be going into more details in in these areas shortly. Uh, the materials and structures, uh, very important part of the system. Uh, Everything that is uh, that is seen in the in the sensor sheet itself, then the electronics, which is the basis for the intelligence of the system. That the electronics part in this context includes both the, the stretchable electronics part and also the rigid electronics part, uh, which meaning rigid components, uh, where the where the embedded algorithms, for example, are are being run. And then finally, uh, we have the software and uh, algorithms uh, for the embedded system, uh, as well as for the for the application le level and the and the cloud level. And uh, in next next few slides, I will highlight some of the technology trends uh, related to this in the, in these areas, and uh, at the top level, uh, addressing those. Then uh, Professor Mandusola will go into into more detail in certain certain area related to the stretchable electronics, and especially what is going on in the research research currently. Uh, first of all, of all the, the about the materials and structures, uh, uh, the the electrical and mechanical behavior of used materials is a key thing in our our measurement system. And there we have uh, had and, and will also have in the future continuous development uh, with our suppliers and also, also research institutes to understand better the, the behaviors and to, to characterize those. And uh, then, then that acts as, an, as a basis for our algorithm work. For the premium look and feel, Material development mainly follows on specific market trends uh, in, 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 the, in the 
in different industry areas, like for example, automotive is a, is a very good example here. Uh, we we are developing technologies which integrate best with those those trends and uh, materials that are being being used there. One specific technology development area uh, is the material transparency and uh, translucency. Uh, that's especially for the HMI use cases. Uh, in all of our material development activities, activities, we drive for solutions which are environmental sustainable, not only in the materials uh, having a low carbon footprint in the, in the manufacturing and the, and the end, end products. Uh, so we also need to take into account uh, different manufacturing methods and uh, which are sustainable. Uh, recyclability of, is of course something that uh, uh, we we always need to have. Finally, we are constantly developing our solutions to be applicable in, in environments requiring cyclic elasticity. And uh, this is not only developing such materials that uh, tolerate this kind of a cyclic stretch, but uh, especially this is also about the structures of the sensors where both stretchable and rigid parts can be seamlessly integrated together. This is especially the kind of area of current innovations in the area because there are kind of certain challenges that needs to be tackled and this is where we have been focusing for the, for the last years quite a lot. In the electronics, uh, first uh, is this kind of a hybrid electronics, which combines the goodies of, uh, from the conventional rigid electronics and, and also the printed electronics. And uh, here the key thing is being able to integrate these, uh, these electronics in such places where it has not been possible before. Thus the, thus the electronics needs to be conformable uh, unnoticeable and of course the smaller it is uh, the better better it will integrate. Another area uh, is the fusion of different kinds of sensors, actuators, audio, lightning uh, for in increased user experience. Sensor fusion is can also be seen as an important technology area for, for measurements and improving the measurement uh, quality accuracy and, and as well as, as safety and together with uh, with uh, intelligent algorithms, uh, machine learning, with, uh, this kind of a sensor fusion can, can provide uh, richer data for the, for the user. A third area is the connectivity. Uh, in a kind of a wired world, uh, Ethernet-based uh, technologies due to its uh, uh, flexibility and scalability is an important functionality in addition to those uh, serial data uh, uh, interfaces that we have today uh, and uh, especially now for the wireless IoT devices uh, it's kind of always online cloud services is a mandatory functionality in the future and that's why that is of, uh, of our development uh, radar currently. And lastly there are certain specific uh, battery technology trends which, uh, which can actually enable whole new use cases in the future. For example, the development is ongoing with this kind of conformable thin film batteries uh, where the capacity increases all the time and at some certain point uh, it is in the level that uh, uh, it can be used uh, together nicely together with our sensors and provide, uh, provide uh, decent uh, capacities for, for IoT uh, devices. Then the last uh, and third area uh, is the software. Uh, here the big uh, change making area is the intelligent uh, real time algorithms that we use for our sensor measurements. Uh, there is still a huge potential in this area due to increased 
processing performance in the in the embedded system the processing performance versus the energy uh, goes uh, up all the time year after year so the capability so in the in these embedded systems in, increases all the time therefore also uh, the using sophisticated machine learning algorithms for example in the embedded systems is is possible and uh, not only using that uh, for the for the end product in a way, real time or long term use uh, for the end user, but uh, same technologies can be also used uh, uh, in the manufacturing and in the assembly assembly phase. Then finally, uh, cloud based uh, services, analytics, as well as cloud based uh, device management technologies is something that. Uh, that uh, where we are working on and uh, is uh, increasing its imp importance also in the future, especially in the IoT devices. The, the use of the cloud services does not only give uh, more and richer data into use, but uh, yeah, developing services cloud-based will also give more flexibility and adaptability for the, for the user. For example, configuring or updating the software remotely doing the remote software updates and configurations. All right, that was, uh, that was finally all from a kind of an overview of the technology areas that, that, that I have. Thank you very much, Petri. And next, we are very excited to hear from Professor uh, Matti Mantisalo concerning the Tampere University related stretchable electronics thoughts and approaches. Please go ahead, Matti. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, uh, my name is uh, Matti Mandusalo and I'm coming from uh, Tampere University. And uh, if you go, uh, so here you can see all my, my um, contact information. If you want to take any connections, there's our web page, uh, there's my email address. So please be free to do that. Uh, if some questions comes uh, later on. But we can go on, on the next slide. So this is, a, uh, for those who doesn't know, uh, Tampere University is the second largest university in Finland. I would say approximately more than, more than uh, 20,000 students, uh, 300 uh, professors. And in that university, I'm coming from a laboratory called Laboratory for Future Electronics, uh, LFE. And that's the, where we are, are doing different kind of, a, let's say, uh, technologies and solutions, uh, quite a lot of, of uh, energy autonomy sensors, IoT nodes. So we are focusing on different methods on how to harvest energy, uh, how to store it, basically replacing the batteries. We are uh, focused on different kind of sensor technologies, um, well, quite a lot uh, wearable technologies. So I personally, I'm I'm involved on on soft and stretchable electronics, on on both uh, mainly on skin electronics, but also some textile integration. And then, what we are, or I, I personally, I'm really keen on integrating printed electronic technologies to conventional electronics, so-called hybrid systems or heterogeneous integration approach. So uh, a strong emph emphasis in, in our university or our research group over there is really on scalable low-cost manufacturing method. This is, is mainly meaning printing uh, tools. And, and then on top of all these sensors and, and things like that, we also investigate new kind of uh, or device, so transistors, diodes, and how to make circuits out of those uh, based on, on organic and metal oxide uh, semiconductors. And we can go on, on the next slide. That shows our uh, infrastructure. Uh, you can find on our webpage also a, a quite good list and up-to-date list of our facilities, what we can do. So basically what we have is two different lines. We have so-called the print lab and thin film fabrication lab. The print lab, we have a wide variety of different kind of printing tools. So let's say inkjet, 
uh, graver, flexo, rotary, so basically all uh, important uh, printing technologies in the same uh, laboratory. And then we have an additional line in the glove box system where we can uh, do these thin film devices and that contains uh, a thermal evaporator. We have uh, characterization tools over there, some inkjet printing things. And most recently we integrated at the beginning of this year an atomic layer deposition uh, so we can make really conformal uh, thin film structures. Uh, we have actually both thermal and, and plasma ALD if, if you are interested in uh, these kind of, uh, of technologies. But that's, uh, let's say, a uh, short summary from our side. Maybe I could add that there is uh, two professors, there's uh, more than 20 persons in the LFE. And uh, if you are interested, please be free to contact me or, or my colleague Don Lupo in, 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 in this. But if we go to today's topics about stretchable electronics, uh, one of the, let's say, main reason why, why is stretchable electronics, it's that we get some benefits and uh, definitely the form factor is the, the key advance. So what we can have is a conformable, uh, deformable and uh, ultra thin, uh, lightweight uh, devices. And I think the easiest uh, application domain is the healthcare, and, and that is, uh, uh, let's say, explained here on the left-hand side. So uh, if you look today's variables or the mainstream of today's variables, those are actually uh, in a, pretty much the same like the mobile phone. Today's smart uh, wrist phones or, or like Apple or a Samsung Active Watch, they are just a miniaturized version of uh, computers or a mobile phones. And mainly all the variables are pretty much the same. But what we can do with the, so what we can do with the stretchable electronics is that we can transform all the same, all those devices into extremely thin, almost like a tattoo-like, temporary tattoo-like devices, as you can see on that picture on the wrist. It's really thin. You don't even see that you are wearing it. And if you are uh, building up it with the right materials, you get quite reliable data, uh, the same information, and you can fabricate these ones by printing, making it low cost. Uh, disposable devices, so it's probably really good in a hygiene point of view as well. And, and it helps us to go into, uh, let's say, digital uh, healthcare. And this is, let's say, the most obvious way uh, to use the, the stretchable electronics. But there are, are many, many others as well, like uh, soft robotics, uh, human machine interfaces, smart building, automotive, and and things like that. So I think the main message why stretchable electronics is that you can actually build up an electronics that can transform to any shape, uh, any form, and it doesn't necessarily need to be stretchable during the use case, but it might regard some stretchability during uh, manufacturing. And, and these are, let's say, two different things that must be taken into account when you are building up your application and it might actually impact also on your material selection. But uh, uh, that's, let's say, there's a wide variety of these uh, applications. So uh, why stretchable electronics? And I'll, I'll let me go to uh, some problems and challenges also via this uh, healthcare, and that can be found on the next slide. So the biggest challenge, what, what, is, what we have today in the electronics or when we are building up different kinds of devices, there's actually a mechanical mismatch. So uh, in this picture, you can see on the right-hand side or, or, or blue colors are materials that we are using when we are building devices. So you can see the Young's modulus of steel or diamond, really hard materials, glass, wood, and things like that. Uh, and then materials that we are, uh, so, so what, uh, how the human has been built, it's much softer material. 
So if you think about like the Young's modulus of muscle or skin, it's on, on the left hand side of, of this, uh, uh, let's say, line. And, and this is, let's say, a clear indicator. So there are some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, overlapping between these materials, like rubber is really, really stretchable, or, or PDMS is really on the, on the left hand side. Uh, but in general, there are a strong uh, mismatch, and and this is creating the biggest challenge uh, for, uh, let's say, conform uh, the the conformability, stretchability, and and if we go to variables, it it creates this uh, not so nice uh, user experience. So we need to find so uh, materials or build up structures that are more on the Young's modulus closer to skin uh, or, or muscle if we are building up applications that are related to on-skin application and if even softer materials when we, if we want to build up devices that go inside the body, uh, measuring, for example, artery or, or, or uh, other parts inside of the, the body. So uh, this is, let's say, showing, in my opinion, quite nicely the challenge. And let's uh, go further. So how this is solved, uh, typically we, we use metals. And, and these are two, let's say, state-of-the-art approaches in the field, uh, typical solutions, let's say. On the left-hand side, uh, you can find how to make a stretchable electronics. There are uh, nice, uh, uh, let's say, like a, a helix or a spring-like uh, conductive structures uh, popped up uh, from the uh, substrate material. So they are connected only in the few places. Uh, you can build up by doing this, you can build up extremely stretchable devices uh, and, and these, let's say, islands, uh, the main electronic silicon devices are connected with these springs. So you can conform this to basically any shape. Uh, there are some challenges. These uh, conductors are, let's say, fragile. Uh, they can tangle quite easily. And uh, the durability is not necessarily the best one. So you need some kind of protective layer on, on top of that one as well. Uh, further, I would say that the manufacturing is not always the, the most simplest one. But the other option is uh, liquid metals. That's also like really good uh, state-of-the-art technology here. And, and the beauty of that one is that you get extremely good conductivity, basically the metals. Uh, but the, the fabrication process is, is, let's say, quite challenging. Uh, you need to build up a uh, certain kind of uh, cavities, inject the uh, uh, liquid metal in it. But once you have done it, it's really a stretchable and, and you can build up extremely stretchable uh, devices. So uh, these are, let's say, two main approaches. And the third one that recently has come uh, really popular, it's the same also that we have. You can turn the, the video on uh, battery at the same time. So. Uh, Basically, what is our approach is that we take inks, we take a soft uh, substrate uh, or stretchable substrates, and then we are using uh, uh, some really simple uh, technology like here, a uh, screen printing. Uh, as, you, as you heard, we use uh, many different kind of uh, printing technologies, but a uh, screen printing is, let's say, one of the most popular used in uh, uh, stretchable electronics, especially if the printed electronics approach is used to make your connectors and conductors. And why is that? It's this is a really the advances is this is really really simple process. At the same time, you can fabricate extremely large uh, area devices in a cost-effective manner. And then let's let's go to the next. Uh, slide. So uh, what you can do over here is you can uh, build up these uh, uh, stretchable conductors uh, over here on the left hand side. Now in the video you can see 
that basically it's a, a circle you can stretch it up until some point and then you basically lose the conductivity and the LED goes off like that and then when you come back these connection points on the uh, uh, ink is becoming uh, back together so basically uh, the electrical conductivity is there again so what is happening happening in the micro level is that there is a, this kind of a, uh, silver flakes, particles, and when you are stretching those uh, further, uh, they are, are uh, less connecting to each other. And finally, when you're stretching those uh, farther and farther away from each other, they you lose basically the whole contact uh, connection because the percolation is um, not anymore there. And uh, this is uh, uh, some years back, uh, five, uh, five years already. Uh, old research and, and some results over there that you can do uh, more than 75% uh, single pool uh, stretch and up to 1000 cycles. And, and you get quite good, usually with these uh, commercially available inks, you get quite good uh, uh, performance up to let's say 10, 20% uh, or so. And I think I have the next slide more about the materials. So, uh, Yes, so uh, in general, I would like to say that there are a lot of available, uh, commercially available material sets uh, already for uh, printing, uh, to be applied by printing for a stretchable ap electronics application. And the most the biggest brands also provide the complete set, meaning that they provide uh, uh, substrate material, conductive ink, uh, dielectric or, or some kind of capsulation layer, uh, so you can build up a multi-layer devices. And the, uh, the beauty why, why this is, uh, let's say, usually provided as a material set is that uh, it's really important that your conductive ink is having an extremely good adhesion to your substrate and, and having a good uh, mechanical uh, support. Uh, typical materials are uh, polyurethane. Uh, we use uh, quite a lot in our research that one as well. We have also done some uh, research in the field of uh, uh, PDMS and, and especially developing a, a PDMS silver ink. And you can find if you are interested in that kind of things and materials, you can look uh, uh, Rika's paper, the DOI uh, is there. So you can uh, use that one to find it out or going our web page, you can get uh, the access to these articles. Uh, the typical conductive materials in these are, are silver or uh, carbon or uh, silver chloride for uh, uh, ECG and, and this kind of a bio potential material, uh, bio potential measurement applications. But uh, other Conductive materials are uh, nanowires or carbon nanotubes or, or a graphene. Uh, these are uh, quite fancy materials, not necessarily as easy to build up or, or uh, apply by printing some coating technologies maybe, but also, also some uh, research in the literature show uh, studies how to print those. We have personally done uh, work on the graphenes and some work with the uh, nanowires. Uh, however, I must say that depending on your application, I would uh, almost say that sheet resistance of these materials are typically much, much higher. So if you are building up conductors or lead wires, then maybe these materials are not the, the best or the most suitable option for you. However, if, if you are interested on, on making, let's say, uh, transparent uh, conductors or the transparency is important for your application, then definitely these are materials that you should look uh, more carefully. Uh, they are not as ma mature than, than the uh, silver, carbon or, or other uh, inks, but they are a good candidates, commercially available and especially research materials. You can find out uh, many, many uh, different alternatives but then um if we go to look uh, more recently like the one program we are doing together uh, in the finland on the next slide uh, 
Hello? Can you still hear me? I'm seeing yeah. the slide 21. Can you change the slide yes, 22? Can hear. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So uh, one of the program, uh, what we are, uh, have done in last almost two years, and uh, let's say one and a half year, and we are ending up it soon, in next next half year, it's uh, Elastronics, uh, which is basically an elast uh, coming from the word elastic electronics, so Elastronics, and that's for uh, focusing on on the future of the wearable electronics. So we, as I said, we, we do a lot of wearable electronic application, but basically the technology is the same, even if you are applying it to uh, other application domains where the stretchability give you the advance. Uh, this uh, program is funded by a business Finland. Uh, so it's a national program and it contains uh, of uh, let's say the whole value chain from uh, materials, uh, printing processes to assembly and and sensor technology and solutions to let's say two main application domains. So we have uh, a consumer, uh, so basically performance monitoring, and, and then the other application domain is a medical monitoring, meaning. A really good quality but uh, let's say disposable electronics and the, the main idea is here that we are focusing on on hybrid printed electronics so we are integrating ultra uh, silicon bear dies uh, in a collaboration with the VTT on our stretchable uh, electronic substrates to make these skin patches and ink textiles and the uh, main idea and, and what we will provide is that we will make this technology suitable for uh, mass manufacturing. So this is the reason why we selected these uh, particular technologies. Uh, we have developed a quite good understanding and we will still uh, publish a couple of, of research results about it, but we get a good understanding of the failure mechanisms in these stretchable electronic devices we have developed testing methods and, and a practical ways to improve the reliability. Uh, at the end, we will also give uh, guidelines and uh, we are building up uh, um, a manufacturing value chain here in, in, in to Finland uh, for a stretchable uh, electronics. And here you can see a couple of, let's say, activities. Uh, there are demonstrators, circuit and basic structures, sensors, and, and the test development. But we can go uh, for, further. The next slide. So I, I took a couple of examples here, just, just to give you an idea. Uh, so uh, usually people are, are, so really I would say the, the most important thing in uh, stretchable electronics is really the uh, characterization and testing so and and you really need to go into extreme stretching values not only the the material a typical material characterization or dma that gives you the young's modulus and things like that you need to go further so you need to do uh, uniaxial testing is the most commonly used but then there are, are also like biaxial testings uh, uh, and biaxial usually means orthogonal testing but we have also looked at alternatives where you are at the same time stretching the devices in all directions. And this is really important uh, for, uh, let's say, certain specific applications. And it's much harder uh, testing method. So I would uh, recommend uh, doing that one when you are evaluating the materials. You will immediately find out the uh, good materials as well as it helps you to understand more better. On, on your application and why it actually fails. The other thing that I want to show, uh, tell here is that uh, uh, what you need to do is you need to always do the single pool testing test, but you need to also do uh, cyclic testing. Uh, I, we have found it out that certain inks are actually extremely good when you do the single pool, but they are not necessarily surviving in uh, cyclic loading conditions. So those are two main aspects that are actually telling two different things and therefore both of them must be tested. Uh, one of the tools that we are uh, heavily using to evaluate the reliability of, of 
uh, our structures and materials. It is related uh, called a digital image correlation. The DIC technology, that's an imaging technology that you can use to uh, uh, see how much uh, stretching in different locations happens when you do the stretching. And then we use our uh, finite element modeling. So finite element analysis to understand which uh, or optimize as the structures and this is giving you like two tools uh, to understand the stretchability of your system how good is the electromechanical performance of it and and they both are therefore let's say important parts you can't live without the other and um, uh, aging i would say environmental aging is uh, extremely important what we have recently found out and we are going to publish is uh, the results related to that one uh, hopefully we can do that one uh, before the summer but at least no later than that uh, we can go on the the next slide i have a couple of let's say points here but i'm going those really fast here and if you are interested, then you can go into extreme uh, technical details and discuss with me later on. Uh, but I would want to point out that when you are doing uh, stretchable hybrid electronics, you will always have a rigid component. And the interface between the rigid component uh, and the stretchable changes the performance dramatically. So you will get a critical point nearby where the rigid components uh, meets the stretchable wires and you can find out different kind of uh, ways to improve it. We have uh, developed uh, uh, certain geometries that you can uh, find out here. And by modeling results, you can identify the, the, the hotspots. And let's say take an example over there, there is a, on the right hand side three different patterns pattern a b and c and as you can see the pattern b has extremely high uh, uh, strain concentration while in pattern c you don't you basically have a smooth structure so modifying your geometry you can uh, do quite nice uh, stuff over there and this is not only the modeling results i on the next page if you go uh, you can actually see the the re re real results on slide 25 it's still uh, slide 24 on my my screen okay maybe petri can you petri has some audio problem now but uh maybe yes i can i can hear you now now you clearly. Can, so which slide. which slide which you slide? Can go to the next slide this geometry model yeah maybe we go to the next next one even even out of out of that one uh basically uh from here you would be able to see that uh they are improvement immediately between these these patterns so the the certain patterns you can do a better uh, single pool testing immediately you can get uh, more than 25 or 20 percent better uh electromechanical performance and the same thing is also seen in in a stretchable uh, or the, the cyclic testing and if you do a certain kind of a, a capsulation and modifying the geometry you can uh, get the same uh, even on, on, on just with the dielectric material. So you don't need to use the same material that you had. And if you go on, on 26, uh, slide 26 or 27. Uh, Petri has been now dropping from the line, unfortunately. Uh, sorry about that. So. Maybe if you can, Matti, summarize, we are now running also yeah, uh, our time yeah. today. So if you summarize briefly and then, then we can have, there are some questions, but we can then discuss yeah. uh, discuss on those. Okay, let's do so. Let's do so. So, uh, and, and you get all the slides later on then. Uh, so uh, there are a number of, of if, we, if we summarize, there are a number of different uh, application where uh, stretchable electronics has uh, a benefit 
uh, there are a number of different ways of fabricating stretchable electronics, but the printed electronics is, is let's say, cost-effective way to do that. And, and the reason is that it gives you the integration possibilities to other processes like fabrics or uh, uh, let's say making textile electronics or or you can do uh, integrate that process with injection molding or over molding process then you can build up structural electronics uh, human machine interfaces and things like that and uh, uh, finally uh, you need to take into account the rigid components how that changes your uh, stress strain distribution so uh, let's say intelligent designing you can do by modeling or uh, uh, DIC you can improve the electromechanical performance by by local tuning uh, that's that's pretty much it if there are some specific questions I think we could we could take those now thank you very much uh very interesting presentation and uh, quite a lot of details and we will also then get uh, get these uh, slides that we can utilize also later on with the audience. We have now utilized the timing. Maybe uh, two questions for those who are then able to still uh, stay on line for one, one for each uh, speaker. So first of all, Petri, uh, there, there's a question relating the uh, reliability and how do we enforce it assure that and do we have some patenting relating our technology so if you can answer to that if you are on online and able to hear yes can can you hear me now yes okay good so so about pat patenting yes like uh, like like said uh, the the in my my part as well uh, when talking about the structures and uh, that was also what uh, what Matti was also, also uh, telling his presentation that one of the challenging areas in the in the hybrid electronics is the is the interface and connecting uh, rigid parts to the stretchable parts, and uh, that is uh, particularly one of the areas that uh, where we have worked quite a lot in the technology area, and that that's also the area where we have, we have also uh, done patenting. Yeah. Okay, and uh, concerning the reliability topic is then protecting certain ways the, the uh, critical parts, which is yeah. of course very important and knowledge uh, yeah. that we also then utilize. All yes, right. of course, the, like, the, like the reliability point of view, uh, like uh, the structures that we develop for for those uh, those uh, rigid uh, stretch interconnection and the overall structure, the reliability is one of the most important element and uh, driver for those new solutions. So that making those those parts uh, reliable, uh, we additionally have, of course, a, a lot of our own testing facilities that we that we utilize in these kind of tests. Not only mechanical tests, but also environmental and electrical tests. Okay. Thank you. And then Matti uh, Mantusalo, uh, again, very interesting presentation. Uh, thank you very much for that. So how, how would you elaborate what makes printed electronics cost effective uh, or efficient compared to, for example, some other solutions? Well, uh, this is this is really what you, uh, let's say, uh, of course, it's always a little bit hard uh, to estimate. It always depends on, on what you are actually doing, what is your end product, and, and let's say how much stretchability or, or, or things you need over there. But if you go to look, for example, some of these extremely stretchable uh, manufacturing uh, processes that are based on, on pop-up structures, uh, these fabrication uh, processes are, are really complex in a sense. It can easily have like 80 process steps. And over here, basically uh, five or, or at least eight uh, is enough to do the same thing. So in, in that way, the, the manufacturing is, is more a uh, simpler way. I would say that will definitely impact on the cost. Uh, also, we can go into maybe a little bit uh, cheaper substrate materials. Of course, uh, inks and the silver are uh, quite expensive compared to copper as an example. So there are, are these kind of constraints to the other direction as well. So um, I would say it, it is at least cost competitive and, and based on application, you need to make the selection. Yes. 
Thank you very much. And also perhaps continuing there that uh, relating to the different manufacturing methods that are then utilized in, in mass manufacturing place uh, phase in, in that sense that is also then linking into, into for sure doing. Um, I think we are now a bit also already over time. So I thank everyone for participating to this session and particularly for our speakers. Thank you very much for interesting presentations. There are still uh, some uh, questions left and unfortunately we're not able to answer all of those now, but we will be then coming back into more detailed answers uh, directly or posting also some summaries to our web pages concerning this webinar uh, series sessions. So thank you all very much and uh, we'll be broadcasting via this channel uh, also later on when there are some interesting topics and launches that we are planning to have in our plans in coming weeks and months. Thank you all very much. Bye bye.